As a soon-to-be graduate, I decided it was time to start thinking of ways to present myself to potential employers. Knowing what work to show and how you need to show it is crucial to improving your chances of finding a job. The aspects of your work that you show greatly depend on who you're showing it to and what your personal goals are. If your goal is to get hired as an animator, you'll need to present your work differently from someone who is looking for a job as a game designer. Aside from how you present your work, there is also the question of what you need to show. Knowing what pieces to show can make or break the portfolio. These days, everyone in the industry has an online portfolio. Whether it's a personal website or a page on ArtStation, digital portfolios are crucial to finding a job in the industry. However, since everyone has a digital portfolio, it's difficult to stand out. This is why on top of my digital portfolio, I've decided to create an art book, which I can bring to interviews with me. How do I create an art book in which to present my portfolio to potential employers in the animation industry? First of all, what is a portfolio? And what does it need to be in order to attract potential employers? How does this form affect the portfolio and how can it enhance the work inside? So, what exactly is a portfolio? Put simply, a portfolio is a collection of an artist's work which can be used to apply to jobs. It shows what kind of artist they are and what kind of art they make. But a good portfolio should tell the viewer more about what they want to make in the future as well. And that's what makes portfolios a little tricky. In order to make a good first impression and show what kind of work you strive to make more of in the future, you need to restrict the amount of work in your portfolio. Only show the absolute best. There is no magic number of portfolio pieces, and the more questionable ones you show, the worse your really good ones look. Self-edit and only keep the art that best shows your skill. This is why in my art book, I only show my three most recent projects, despite the fact that I've made a lot of other work that I am also proud of. On top of this, I've chosen to place the most recent projects first, despite the fact that this makes my book acronological. Analyzing portfolios not only helped me learn more about it, it also helped me understand the point of view of the potential employer better. Looking through many different portfolios over the course of a couple of hours, they began to blend together and only a couple really stood out, either because they were very impressive or because they were poorly made. I found that the less work was shown in a specific portfolio, the easier it was to remember it. When a page is filled with artwork, you're more likely to remember there being a lot of work, rather than remembering whether it was good or not. Think of a portfolio as a museum. In a museum, you'll rarely see a wall covered in different paintings. You'll usually only see a couple of paintings per room. This is because the art needs space around it, in order to be properly appreciated. Therefore, it is necessary to make a selection beforehand, in order to give every piece the attention it deserves. In order to make this selection, this simple question must be asked. What is this work's best quality? Whether it's design, modeling, or animation, every piece needs to tell the viewer something. It needs to have a purpose within the portfolio. A portfolio should show what the artist is best at, but it should also show what their potential is. Showing a specialization will raise the chances of the artist getting hired, because it shows that they know what they're doing and that they are willing to dedicate themselves to a specific task completely. However, the work should also be diverse to some extent. A person that is incredibly skilled at sculpting a hyper-realistic man, but is unable to sculpt anything else, will only be able to do that one particular task, and so they won't be hired for anything else. Therefore. It's necessary to establish a theme of some sort, whether it's a genre that returns a lot, or a target audience, a portfolio that forms a whole is more memorable and therefore stronger. Above all, a portfolio needs to show who the artist is. It's the first impression that may lead to an interview. So, to pique the employee's interest, it's important to show a little bit of who the creator is. The focus still needs to be on the work, of course, 
but giving a portfolio that little touch of personality can make a big difference. While doing research on this subject, the majority of the portfolios I came across had the same colour scheme and layout. They looked as though they were all variations of the same website. A couple of these websites had very impressive pieces, but because they had the exact same look as 10 of the other portfolios I had just seen, they all blended together in my memory, and I was unable to distinguish them. This is why it's important to give the portfolio a bit of personality. The manner in which a portfolio is presented has impact on the portfolio itself. So how does a portfolio in book form differ from a digital portfolio? Is there a great difference? And if so, what are its qualities and faults? A big difference between a website and a book is that the website can be altered at any time while a book cannot. Once it's printed, it can no longer be changed. Therefore, designing a book requires a different thought process from designing a website. This also means that an analog portfolio cannot be utilized as a portfolio for very long. A portfolio needs to show an artist's best work, and as time progresses, an artist's best work will most likely improve. After a couple of years, probably already after a couple of months even, a portfolio in the form of an art book would be far less effective, as the artist will have improved their skills, and so the portfolio will no longer accurately reflect their work. An analog portfolio cannot be changed, it is temporary. Therefore, my art book will be used as a secondary portfolio. My digital portfolio, which can be updated at any time, will be my primary portfolio, used when applying to new jobs. My art book, on the other hand, will only be shown to potential employers who have invited me for an interview. I will use it as a supporting portfolio, so as to show my work process in more depth. Books are generally meant to be read in certain order, while well, websites are not. A website usually has links which lead to different pages, making it impossible to know in which order viewers will see the website. There are, however, two ways to create a sense of progression on a website. One is a form that many webcomics use, which is for each page to link to another specific page, making it easy for the viewer to look at the content in a particular order. The other is a form most often used on social media, which is the infinite scroll. However, social media use it not because it allows a progression, but because it's addicting. There is certainly something that can be said for designing a portfolio as an addicting feature in order to make people stay on the website longer. However, this is not a tactic I wish to use for my own portfolio. I prefer to get people invested by creating a natural progression in the information being presented. The fact that books are meant to be read in a certain order makes it easier to tell a story, which in turn can strengthen the portfolio because it feels more like a whole. When creating a book, different printing and binding techniques need to be taken into consideration. Different binding techniques are better suited to different goals. A hardcover is very sturdy and could endure a lot more than a softcover. So, for example, a hardcover is better suited for a children's book because children tend to damage books very quickly. However, hardcover involves a different binding technique, sewing instead of gluing. This means the pages need to be printed on larger sheets of paper and the binding itself will take a lot more time and effort, therefore rendering this technique far more expensive. These binding techniques are objectively better suited to different end goals. However, the different printing techniques that are available are subjectively better suited to different things. Some may argue that a glossy finish can make a cover look more polished, while others may find it distracting. This also applies to the type of paper used. Some may prefer thick glossy paper because it feels rugged, while others would choose thin matte paper. This is simply a matter of personal preference. A strong portfolio needs to show who the artist is, and needs to show only their very best work. With every piece, it's necessary to think of what it needs to be added and what it's going to tell the viewer. It's also important to show diverse work, to a certain extent, in order to show that the artist is flexible without being spread out too thin. An art book can greatly accentuate art, thanks to the use of different printing and binding techniques. 
The different types of paper and the ink used within an art book can help establish a unique experience that isn't possible with a website. However, because it's analog, it's impossible to alter it after it has been printed, making it only suitable as a temporary or supporting portfolio. A digital portfolio is still a more effective way of presenting one's art, as it can be updated at any moment so as to accurately reflect the artist's skills, which, after all, is the primary use of a portfolio.